alien tanks. Well, sir, like I told you earlier, and uh, you will agree with me that uh, you were also uh, in Liberia. And like I said earlier, once you are associated with something more special of this nature, you will always uh, be, you know, uh, consulted. And in my strive to always stay alive, if I had an assignment, I always, you know, made sure that uh, I stayed, you know, at, at, at where I was. So uh, when uh, everything had subsided, he became uh, the president. Uh, he knew uh, around the April 6th period, like I told you, how I met uh, him and uh, Mr. Krumah. So, I mean, he still knew that uh, I was around, so uh, he asked to see me. That's how I started a relationship with him. Were you a professional fighter? No, sir. I mean, uh, my, I, uh, were you a uh, special analyst who can observe things and then report to the commander in chief? Well, sir, I think a professional fighter would be uh, maybe somebody who chose uh, that, uh, who chose fighting or so as their profession. Uh, I am a student of economics. I'm not a, a professional fighter as such. But like I said, because I was involved with uh, fighting, I've interacted with uh, the various uh, fighting people. I think, I think what, what he really wanted, I think what he really asked me to do was to give, to hear, to get another uh, side of the, of, the, of, of the story. So uh, I think basically that's, that's what it will be, sir. It is said that General Isa Musa, Musa arrested several NIMBA personalities, including Stephen Daniels and the others, and were brought to Kakata at the police station where they were imprisoned. And that at a certain time, you came to that station and demanded that Pape send you to come and carry the people. And since they were taken and carried, they were never seen anymore. What can you say about that? Well, sir, let me just uh, clarify some of you, sir. My name is Setayo Adolphus Dolo. So I hope somebody did not just say Dolo and you jump to me. The reason I say this is because I had similar experience when I was doing physical science, uh, I think it was 102 at the university. There was a guy there whose name was S. Adolphus Dolo and my name was S. Adolphus Dolo. So when the guy brought the paper, he did that. So, sir, there were a couple of dolos. So, what I want to make clear to you, sir, is that uh, everything that I have shown, I've, I've, I've told you here, from the day that I told you I, I got involved, there are people who are alive, not just anybody. There are people who are alive, and you can go and verify these things. And I think one of the groups, I don't know when that incident happened, but one of the group that could maybe be a better judge, maybe could be you from the perspective of the interfaith uh, committee or the Liberian Council of Churches. Reason being that uh, they follow my progress in what a positive, they follow me all through until, meaning that they knew exactly where I was until I left from uh, the embassy in a, uh, August of uh, August of ninety, uh, 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 and above and beyond that, sir, uh, if you were around here, it was not just possible for somebody to leave from here to go to uh, Mr. Taylor's area or whatever. That is the reason why I cannot. I, there's no way you can uh, 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 put me at that spot or whatever because. 
when I left from here in 92, I don't know when this incident happened, but when I left from here in 92, I didn't come back here until, uh, until uh, in, uh, in 06. And the whole of Monrovia, I mean, I grew up in this, the whole of Monrovia can tell you that all along I was here because why I say the whole of Monrovia? Because I was running this uh, nightclub called Perime that almost everybody knew. So I was here, sir. So I'm just saying that uh, I hope they're not just taking Dolo. So because they say Dolo, and maybe they say me, but there was no way I could have been there, sir. The testimony did not only mention the name Dolo, but also add to it the junior senator for Nima County. The present junior senator for Nimba County. Yes, sir. And, I, and, and me as a Nimbae, I know you, the first Dolo, yes, sir. ever become senator Thank in Nimba County. Thank you, sir. And, uh, sir, to that, I can also tell you from my own interaction with people, people mention me and they really don't know me. People mention me, they don't know me. And, sir, with no disrespect to those who are deceased, but I can proudly sit here and say if anybody know me, you know me. Uh, I know it is true that you are on a commission, but at the same time, you also cannot deny that you are my father. In terms of the culture that we all grew up in, where one person, one child is the community child. And I am sure from all of my interaction with you, maybe you didn't mention it, but you had no reason not to mention it. But in all of my interaction with you, I have never, ever lied to you, nor have I ever deceived you. And you can recall, prior to my being a part of the war and after the war, I've always come to you for guidance. Uh, to like advise you, to give me advices on uh, our county issue or so. So definitely you have every right to ask me all of what you're asking. But I can sit here and also say that all of those who come from Nimba and sit be appear before the TRC commission, you will be one of the elders that know them really well. That is in no way to say that you were with me to follow my every action or so. No. So... Uh, you know very well that uh, Mr. Daniels was my father's best friend. You know that very, in fact, he was, he was your friend. All of you people were family, were brothers. And you don't know this kind of trait to be uh, 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 in my family. I know that you are disappointed or you were disappointed or you got heartbroken. How did my son end up being there or whatever? I understand that. But by the same token, whatever... I did. I was always conscientious of the fact that a lot of people know my family, know my father. Like one time I listened to one of uh, the guests that appeared before you here and said that uh, it was Goba Woli that started soup. No, I mean, that was just a little mistake. It wasn't Goba Woli that started soup. It was my uncle, Michael J.S. Dolo, who started the Student Unification Party. He brought in uh, Goba Woli. And how did he bring in Goba Woli? The problem was that Goba Woli had a low problem with uh, his accent. I remember there was this opposition party. He told me that it was called ASAP or something. That was like the party at, the, at that time. And uh, because Goba Woli had some problem with how he pronounced um, words, so they agreed that we're going to do this speech and for example, there's just like a war, for example, or you say rope, and maybe go back what we always say loop. So they all decided that as you read a speech, when you get to this, and the guy who was the head of ASAP was very articulate. He said, well, when you get to this point, saying you will say loop instead of rope, we all clap and nobody will hear you. And so basically, that's how, and anybody who go into soup history, they will find out it was actually my uncle who did that. So I'm saying this to say that the family that I came from, this is the last place they thought I would be. This is last bit, but again, this was, that's why when you keep saying join, this was not something that I chose to do. Unfortunately, bad things happen to people. 
and I'm no exception. So now you are just in the wrong place at the wrong time and got no reason to give for why you were there. But I could never, ever have done that. And I'm saying, why it is true that you were not with me every step of the way. I believe there are a lot of us from Nima that you read. And from a distance, when they say John, you know it is John. And one of these incidents, if you may recall, one of our citizens had come to you and told you that uh, there were a lot of yellow equipments that were out of for him that was stolen by some people and was somewhere in San Equally. And when you called me, sir, I went to you and I said, but oh man, you can sit there and San Equally is in your hand like this. Where part of San Equally do we have this equipment that this man won't know? He said, right on the football field. And I said, okay, sir, give me time. I'm going to go to Nima and I'm going to verify to you and this man had told you and I that he was going to go there. I went to Nima. It was never there. The man never showed up. And I came back to you, sir. What this man said is not true. He didn't show up. And you even said, well, thank you. But son, I'm come and make up stories. So, sir, why it is true that, and which is the, the most unfortunate thing, when you associate with something, whatever your intention was for which you went there, it will always follow you. I cannot deny it that I associated with the IMPFL. I cannot deny it that I associated with the NPFL and ULIMO. I cannot deny that I associated with the uh, government uh, of Liberia. But sir, what I can tell you is that uh, in my association with them, I knew I had limits. And it was all because I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that is how much, sir, that I can say to you uh, with regards to uh, this. I can, it can never, ever be possible that I was there, sir. When the TRC went to San Nicolae, Yes, sir. A witness appeared before us and said, they were sent out by Mary Young. Yes, sir. The city mayors. Sir, if I have your permission, maybe I just want to interject there, sir. And I tell you and the commission, with all due respect, sir, if I had to do what I did then again, I'll do it today. This was the situation. I come from San Equally. Though you say you're from San Equally, I say you're from San Equally too. But the reality is that there was, and sir, like I said earlier, if you, including your very self, sir, anybody who comes from Nima, know if I know anywhere in San Equally, never been to Saclipia, never been to Tapeta, none of those areas. And there was this young man, there was no war in San Equally while I was there, the war was in Ganta. This young man who happened to be the son of uh, this man we call, I know, 502, uh, one immigration, I think he's now what we call him. Is he Kaba? John Kaba. John Kaba's son. The information is like people are removing, are breaking down Madingo people's house. VA called me and told me when I was in Ganta. I came to San Equally. I held a meeting. I said, How can you do this with the community? I come from here. I am basically concentrating my concentrate on how I can contain what is happening. There's no war behind me. Why, what am I hearing that people are breaking uh, Madingo houses down? This should not happen. I left and went. When I came back, it was just a coincidence. I was in San Equally when we have come to come to say uh, Lai, uh, uh, this Lai Kaba's son was the one removing how you call it, people. Uh, I, I, it didn't really bother me who sent him. But here you are. A young Mandingo man, you hear that they rem they break in Mandingo people's house down. Then you will join with the people to 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 to, 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 to break their house? No, I brought him and gave him twenty five as a small brother, not as a soldier, as a militia or whatever. I gave him twenty five sent to the to the to the police and said you shouldn't do this. And he stayed there. His mother came and talked to me, and that's how he left, sir. If that was the incident you were alluding to, yes, that's what I did, and I. Treated him as my little brother, not a, as a soldier or whatever. And I think that's what you told us to do. Well, I think you need to know that John Kaba 
was never a Madingo. He was a Gio man, but was named after Ome uh, Kaba. Thank you, sir. So that's how he is. Thank you, sir. But as you also, said, while we were in the state, a son of Elias Suleiman Silla appeared before us and testified that you brutally killed his father and looted his wealth. What can you say about this? Well, sir, my question to you before I answer that, sir, would be when did this incident happen? I'm saying when, sir, not that I want an answer from you, but sir, I have just told you, for example, when I came from point A to point B. And uh, like I said, I don't know the young man you are, you, you, you are talking about, but I remember this lady that was working for me who mentioned this to me for the very first time. It was based upon that, that myself drove in the yard to find out whether I was the person. I don't, I have absolutely no idea. And the lady who told me this information for the first time is in town. She said, Chief, one boy, I always want for him to come to the club. He said he can't come to the club because uh, you how you call it, uh, kill his father. I said me. That was how come I went there. And sir, between you and I, because I felt so strong about it that I didn't know about it, that's why I went in the yard. So to come and, and the good thing about mom being here, sir, that I keep telling you is that uh, every step of the way that I went, people that I was associated with, are all here. When I came to Monrovia, meaning after I left the, uh, the, 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 the Lebanese Embassy, uh, I am PFL was all around Monrovia, all around. The first place I ever, ever went when I walked through here was across the bridge. Then from there, I went to uh, this uh, Carway Junction. That was the first place I ever went when I came from there. And I never came out of there until after uh, August until maybe like around September when uh, when uh, Echo Mo had already like established their grip and one time we came out here with uh, Mr. 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 Johnson and if my memory even sets me right sir just about the time uh, we came out of right past August or so uh, when Mr. Johnson and I first uh, came to Mon River and had to go back. I remember he had asked us, because that's almost like going back to the question you asked me for. He had asked us, uh, AFL had come as far again now as uh, the Ministry of Defense, and he had asked us to ensure that they were not there. And uh, in the process, I think at around August or so, uh, August, earlier September, uh, some of clothes are deceiving. Right uh, in a, in, around the barracks area, uh, I uh, almost got killed. And uh, if I took uh, what I'm wearing, all of my back, you see uh, a lot of uh, bullet wounds on my back. It was a doctor here called Dr. Casas, whose clinic I was there for almost like so much of a long time. And when I left from there and went back, that's how come I felt I couldn't stay with it anymore, and I came in town. And so I will say to you and to this young man who uh, told you this, because on several occasions I've tried to uh, meet with uh, my legal opinion leaders to explain to them exactly, uh, because I didn't like all of these rumors, you know, surrounding me. And so if there's any way that anybody can put me on this part, I sit right here and say that uh, then everything and anything I've ever told you here is not truth. It's nothing to believe. These things, sir, they never happen. And I try to remember so well, even like when I was in the hospital here uh, at the uh, Casas Clinic, people who work there, I think they are still alive. They can tell you exactly when I went in there and when these things, you know, could have ever you know, happened. So people will say things, yeah, maybe based on what somebody said, or uh, maybe based on what they think. But I made it my business, like around 91, when I heard that story, I went through the yard somewhere around a cathedral, and I 
you know. And if you even brought the uh, lady before me today, I don't know. I met her. If she's, if the lady I met is the one that said was the wife, I mean, I met her and I, I explained to you exactly what I said. So, uh, so believe me, I am not one of those people. What a war or normal situation that would never think that there's a tomorrow. There is always a tomorrow. And uh, that you can get away, yeah, you might get away with it this day, but there is a tomorrow. And all I can say to you, sir, uh, with uh, all due respect to you, and I'm talking to you here, you gotta forgive me, in two capacity, as a member of the TRC and uh, as an elder from Nimba. And I am so convinced, I am so convinced that uh, you have your own way of finding out the truth. And no matter how hard you try to cover the truth, the truth will always manifest itself. And I know you have your own will, and this community has her own will. And if I even have to come back to you, whether in public or in private, and there's anything that can link me to that, sir, then everything I've told you is untrue. But those things never, never, ever happen. And sir, that was the, re I wasn't trying to like brag, but that was the reason why I tried to explain to you about how my business uh, went about. Uh, people will see you and say, oh, he's doing this because uh, it is uh, from the sports of war that he's doing this. It's all over. But sir, it is not true. It is not true. And what you don't honestly work for, you can never, ever see the end. And like I told you earlier, sir, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. If I was opportune to have a contract that paid me 50000 a month, United States dollar, after I have paid my people, and I'm not saying one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, almost a little over a year or so. So there is no way that I, so this is never ever happen, sir. And I still look forward to that day when I will like sit with the family and they will ask me anything. So maybe, sir, what you can do for me, the family and the commission is like, you might want to go back to find out exactly what time of the year, for example, that thing happened. Because from the beginning, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, I was here until when I left. And if you want me after here to take you to uh, those people who are not Liberians, who were foreign people that were in there and saw me leave that area that time, they are all available. So these things never happen, sir. They never happen. It is also said that during the uh, campaigning, there was a slogan that you were using, and that is, vote for me, and you will not return the Madingo's properties back. Wow. And it may interest you to know that the area you, you are reported to have earmark. Sorry? You said you reported to have earmark on an area in Ganta, either for a market or monument. Now there is a convergence of people there today. My information said they are now digging foundations. She by force and so forth. So, what can you she say? Was, do you know about it? She yeah. And I will say to you straight up, from the satire Adolphus Dolly you've been knowing from a toddler, and I'm saying to you, like I said, you have to forgive me. I'm speaking to you as a commissioner and as a father. From where you sit, from the person you've been knowing, does that resemble me? In as much as I don't expect you to give me an answer, from because you know me well from like that, you know my father, you know my mother, you know my uncle. So people say I know you, and that's from a distance. But you don't know me for a distance. I am your son. Does that resemble me? But let me just uh, give you a, 
So, and it's good you've been brought out. Let me just give you some information that you that will be interesting uh, for you to know. With regards to this era in Ganta, for example, a committee that I am a part of that was set up by the president, this land committee, uh, had a technical committee chaired by one uh, Imam Sharif. Imam Sharif is from Kipman. There had been this story back in the days that uh, that place was a market and blah, 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 and the rest of it. I don't know Ganta well. The market I know used to be somewhere around Kinta area or whatever, but that was the story. But you know the dynamics of Neymar. Ganta's story is different completely from Sanikuli's story. Sanikuli, I am an authority because I know that well. So when this Imam Shari did his report, in his report that is available at the Ministry of Internal Affairs, he recommended that that place be a market. Is at the Ministry of Internal Affairs. When the Minister for Internal Affairs sent the document to us and I saw it, you can ask him any day. I said, no, this is not possible. Why is it not possible? Because if you do this, it would be as though the manor had trumped over the Madingo. So what's the way forward? I said, well, then that's what we needed to sit down to discuss before this committee could have made a recommendation, sir. So I didn't make my recommendation. But after that report got to me, what did I do? Um, I went to uh, Mr. Allen Doss, the, the OMA guy who just, uh, the Secretary General who just left, and said, look, we have a situation where uh, our people are tussling over this land. How can you help us? He asked me, what's the way forward? I said, well, this is the way I see it. And there needs to be more streets in Ganta because I think what is happening in Ganta is uh, access to market, meaning access to road. Everybody want to be on the road so that they can be able to, you know, to sell their stuff. And my idea of opening the roads in, in Ganta was not redoing the roads that are there. There's a new boulevard that's called Bambad Boulevard, so that goes now to Seklipi. My thought, and my, what I told him that time, that you can call him the final was that. And I also told the current uh, foreign minister of uh, Sierra Leone, uh, Madam Bangura, and based on consultation, that's what I thought, that on that new boulevard, the government should now go in there, since it's still in its embryo stage, to at least construct 20 shops, what we would call stores, construct those 20 shops, lay the streets out, and then turn the shops over to the uh, city authority with the understanding that one Manino man here, one Mano man here, one Gio man here, one Pele man here, so that everybody have access to road and they will pay that money to the city council so that it's not discriminated you know, against uh, anybody. And this controversial plot of land that is claimed by Mandingo, is claimed by Mano, we can, since Mano people die in that area, Mandingo people, Pele people, everybody die in that area, we can use that whole piece of land that has a lot of Mano people on it now as a memorial park. So he said, wow, that's a brilliant idea. I never thought about it that way. So if that's what the commission would propose, that is something we can think about. Predicated upon that, I started a whole consultation with uh, some Madingo elders. And I invited them at my house and said, look, I need you to help me with this one. Can you give me today so that I can give you tomorrow? They're like, what do you mean? I said, well, when I go to the Mano people, they say, oh, so you're taking side with the Madingo people? When I go to the Madingo people, they say, oh, so you're on the Madingo people's side. Now, I was not in Ganta. I don't know about this place. Can we put a big memorial park in this area where all of us can sit down tomorrow and say, hey, this is the area that all of us fought for? Because the Madingo, the man and the Gil that were fighting in Nima, it was one thing they were fighting for, for their home. That place is Mano Man Home, is Gil Man Home, is Mano uh, is Madingo Man Home. So basically that was that. So these were my suggestions. So for anybody to insinuate or try to imagine 
that I will go or anybody will go to campaign to 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 say that you will not give uh, uh, Madingo people land back or whatever. How true can I be? Oh uh, uh, you and I grew up in San Nicole, like my memory can remember, if I can remember well, when you had those several business, the Coastery and the other business you were doing. From Ome Konoma house, you go to my uncle's house. That's what it is, right? In San Nicole, right? Now, if you went there today, you will see it. There was this day that I came and Somebody is trying to do some construction on Omer Konoma's property. And I'm saying to myself, but if I sat down here and somebody did this, then I'm responsible. Because we should be our brother's keeper. Musa Konoma and the rest of it, all of us grew together. And this guy who came to do this construction, yes, he's a man of man. But this was not one of those people that I knew from San Nicole, you know, before. So when Via came and told me, I said, no, this can't happen. And as I speak to you, for example, that never happened. But what has the Ganta situation a little peculiar from that of San Nicola is simple. The people in Ganta, for all I know it, they're not willing to say the truth to one another. Meaning, if you are living here, and I'm living here, and my name is Pei and your name is Kafuma, I should be able to say Kafuma was living here. But if your neighbor cannot say that, it's just difficult. Now, I am not from Ganda, like I said. If you went to San Diego recently, like you said, all the Madingo property in San Diego, as far as I know, is not occupied by Mano people. Those ones that you see people in, the Mano governor, who happens to be Via Toure, is the one uh, who's collecting rent. I remember we had gone there when I tried to tell them, uh, the, the commission, they didn't understand it then. Uh, Commissioner Boo, is also a part of that committee. It was herself, the UN representative, the committee that was set up. We all went to San Equally and we visited all of those structures that were in San Equally. So, sir, in short, I was not a part of any campaign that would say that vote for me and uh, I will uh, give, uh, I wouldn't give my new people property back. If you check the, uh, the, the, the result from uh, the Elections Commission, Senator Johnson beat me in Ganta, for example. So uh, he, he won me in Ganta. So that, that could not have been the message. That's why I put it to you like, you never saw that in my father or my uncle either. So I think what is in a man, he passed it down you know, to uh, his children. And uh, it's, it, it's, just, it's just beyond me. Because why it is true that I don't know of uh, any Mandingo person in Nima so that they didn't vote for me, I know for a fact that a lot of Mandingo people voted for me. Because my definition of voting for me is where you will publicly say, look, support this young man. Even if you didn't vote for me, the father, you said it publicly to people. I mean, there are people who listen to this. So to that extent, uh, they will not support me and I'll be there saying that, uh, 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 you will get. I mean, what right do I have to uh, take somebody's property or so, sir? So that Thank didn't you. happen. Uh, if I may do a clarification, I did not only know your father and uncle, but we were best friends. We interacted together in different fields. For example, your father even though he was a professional teacher, but he used to love military. Thank you. And so in the militia, he was very active. Thank you. And when the late President Tottman had the 26th celebration there, he asked the battalion at the time, Emmanuel Glaser, who the former Chief Justice was our commanding, officer uh, and Lanco battalion to bring two persons so they can be recruited into the army 
and that how your father name was sent and one other vibe that used to be in Lango called Freeman was also sent Thank because you. we know they were very active in the military and your uncle because of our relationship he appealed to me to become member of his councilman when he was city mayor so the only thing that perhaps you may have mistaken is say is that you and myself grew up together no no uh, <laughs> so we could sir, not. No, I grew sir, with you. you grew up in our hands yes sir well okay. uh, th thanks for the clarification Thank you very sir much. and uh, i mean uh, i appreciate all of your compliments uh, <coughs> that has to do with my father sir but i just again uh want to still say that i'm happy to be here and it's good that the three sides of the story everybody will be able to hear it. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. For your testimony. In your statement, you said at one point in time you were part, you were in the Lutheran Church when the massacre happened, and then after the massacre, you recovered, you seek refuge for some time, and then later on you left to go on INPFL base. But before that time, you were on the university, I don't know whether you graduated or you were staying in school, but you did mention that you, economic was your major and sociology your minor. No, sir, no, ma'am. Uh, my first degree, I studied economics and accounting. My second degree, I studied sociology and political science. Okay. So before the crisis or before 1990, you already had first degree? Before 1990, uh, I was already in school. I didn't have my first degree then. In the 80s, I entered the university uh, in the 80s. So I didn't have my first degree then, a little mid-80s. And when you went on Prince Johnson Bay, well, when you were at the UN compound, you helped to assist people. You were kind of a supporter, a spokesperson. And then at the Lutheran Church, people look up to you. You know, because maybe based on your educational background or your social status, you assisted people. So on the base, you actually went to seek refuge, but later on, according to you, you were made part of the INPFL. I'm asking this question to say because knowing the kind of person you were at already, because who know yourself, you have certain status in life. Because initially you are a businessman, the status you have, most young people never had this status. And the fact that Prince Johnson or the senior senator knew your father, you know, it would appear as if because of that relationship, he wouldn't make you to be part of NPFL. So I just want to know whether your being part of NPFL, was it voluntary? Oh, you mean NPFL? Well, uh, man, let me just say this. I kind of have an idea of where maybe you could be driving at, where victims become perpetrators. Uh, I can uh, appreciate that. But this was nothing that anybody could prepare for. Like I told you earlier, on a normal condition, if you welcome somebody into your house, you give them a seat, you give them water to drink. And when we got there, I mean, I thought somebody took me. But just where I got out from the car, there where I stood. And as though I didn't even exist. And it was how come, uh, because like I said, almost every movie you made in that compound, somebody asked you, but what you do? I said, oh, it was the uh, general and myself that came. But then go behind there, you can't be standing in front because I was right like, you know, before the house. So basically that's how uh, I got there. And madam, to be honest with you, to be very frank and honest with you, uh, when I came out of the, out of the Lutheran Church, uh, because the city had a UN compound was not as dramatic as that, you know, that was at the Lutheran Church. To be honest with you, anything that was against door, I was a part of it. I mean, because 
I knew at the end of the day, if I didn't do it, I mean, uh, I was going to be killed as well. So basically, uh, you would think, well, you know, this guy know your father, so come and do this. Yes, that would be the normal situation. But like I said earlier, it didn't happen that way. That was not the case. Had it happened that way, I don't think I would have been sitting down here to, you know, face the music like I'm doing. But it just didn't happen that way. And from the Lutheran Church, I was not prepared to die. I was not prepared to die. So based on our experience, you voluntarily joined the IMPFL? I did not join, madam. I did not join. What I told you earlier was when I was asked to be with the women in the kitchen, and I was just there like, just like what anybody would do in the kitchen. I know I didn't belong there, but I was just trying to stay alive. Until this day, I think a day or two to August 24th, when a group of uh, troops or so were going out of to find that area, whatever. They couldn't drive while they were in this truck. They had this accident. And then uh, another pickup going, they had this accident. From Dixville area, the MPF had started attacking, and uh, they just needed people to say, all the men should go. That was how come. Uh, I saw myself in the middle of that. That was just how it happened. Now, after that, or before that time, can you tell us the kind of training you went through on the INPFL base? No, ma'am. Um, there was nothing really conventional. I mean, what it was, like I told you when I was in there, these guys would come uh, and uh, they always like pick at me, what this guy doing here, he always with his women and stuff like that. And uh, gradually they started introducing weaponry to me. So uh, I was there for like, maybe I was there simply for a week or so when I was being introduced to this weaponry or whatever. And like I said, when I had first gone to uh, this, uh, this first semi encounter or whatever, I mean, I was just like, lost in the process. I mean, it was a lot of noise. It was a lot of bang here and there. And when we came back, I didn't have to come back on a Mr. Johnson's residence because they were there where I was actually at. I didn't have to come back. And so I had to stay uh, with the guys uh, in various houses that were considered to be the barracks or whatever. So uh, that's how come weaponry came about. So the training was less than two weeks? But I'm saying, I wasn't trained as in train. I was just introduced to weaponry and this is a AK, this is this, this is how you open it. So it was not like where you had this proper training. And if you were in my situation, you would really want to know weaponry as far as possible because if that's what you had to survive by, then you had to know it at that time. So it was not like training as in training where you put a group of people together and say you're going to train them or whatever. But then eventually, as you stay with it, uh, you get to how you call it, uh, learn your weapons. On the IMPFL base, were there civilians? Uh, Madam, I think I said that uh, earlier. Uh, you know, that was my first time going to Callway, and if you drive from Monrovia to Callway, because since I left and I haven't been there, it's going to be like to your left, I'm told it was some uh, old compound before. So they were like confined, you know, uh, in that area, and maybe there were other places around, but I didn't stay there this long to really, I, I was not really interested in uh, knowing how the place looked, because once I had the opportunity, I knew I would leave to go so because I didn't. This was what I, that wasn't what I was going in for. So I would have left once I had the opportunity, and immediately I had the opportunity, I left. You were on the base when former President Do was killed because you stay on the base from August to October. Well, uh, on the base would mean that. Uh, I was living in the area, but I was with the uh, IMPFL. IMPFL when, uh, how you call it, uh, the former president do also died. Can you tell us what happened to his body? I have no idea. Uh, all I remember is that uh, he got uh, he got arrested and brought to Carway, and was just like. 
uh, how you call it, uh, we've gotten do, but everybody have to go to uh, put up defense because chances are, you know, uh, other people will come. So uh, basically, uh, I mean, uh, and again, if anybody was around uh, the IMPFL establishment, if you were not supposed to be uh, like uh, in the residency of uh, the head of IMPFL, you can't be there. So if this is where you are, this is where you should be. So I was not, uh, how you call it, on that side to know all of the drama that unfolded. There are information that at one point in time, a colleague went because a former senator, I mean, senior senator said he was in BIM for 25 years and later his body was burned. And other information are saying that his head was there. Did you hear this when, while you was there? Madam, you know, um, Madam Commissioner, what I will say to you is that uh, Sometimes you appear to be a part of something that you are not really a part of it. So uh, that was not really a part of my, uh, my thought. All I was thinking about, and like uh, this is a fact that a lot of people didn't know, and I keep saying the good thing about it is that there are people in Liberia today whom all of them are not Liberians, but know the facts from August, like almost like late August, September, October, less than three months. That was how long I was associated with that facility for. That is the fact. And why do I say it's the fact? Because it's all around. I mean, that's why I said for for respect of those people who got no business being this, these are people that I can reference you to that at this point in time, this person can tell you where I was and what I was doing and whatever I was doing is open that you know you could see. So I didn't go there like trying to make it a professional career, you know, to be there. And Madam Commissioner, like I said, I regret everything, everything from the day this in, from the day I saw myself in whatever city, I mean, I regret it. But all I can say is that uh, I cannot like turn back the hands of time. But this was not something that uh, I had ever planned, you know, to want to do. No. Well, you kept saying that sometimes you find yourself in the position that you in something you actually don't want to be dead. But based on your situation, you had choices. Show me. Show me. Then why decide the other way? No, no, I said show me. You said hard choice. I mean, you, you know, had the financial standing, you know. No, You madam. could le leave this country at any point in no, time. No, madam, don't, 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 don't get it wrong. Let me just remind you. Uh, I was never a wealthy person. No, yes. no, no, I'm coming to you. I was never a wealthy person, nor am I a wealthy person. What I explained to you exactly what I'd had. You know, like, when a war is coming... He don't send you telephone and say, uh, I'm coming, get ready for me. No. I remember when I left the house this day from the bypass, my JK compound, and went to, uh, to, to, to the UN compound. That was the last I ever saw of my house. That was the last I ever saw of my house. So, I mean, uh, I was like starting over, and when I found the opportunity to leave, that's why I left in October. Because... And the reason I left in October was because there was a third group which happened to be Ecomog. So I mean, I felt you know comfortable that you know I could leave, and if I came to a, where Ecomog was, I mean, I was protected. Basically, that's why I left because that was not a place that I belonged at the time. So we, in the situation with uh, with IMPFL, that's 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 how come I left from there. If I was comfortable. I would have, uh, I would have stayed with them. Like I remember uh, when I was arrested uh, in uh, in uh, 2002, in fact, 1992, uh, prior to Octopus, when other fighters were like going towards the MPFSR, I would have gone there. But I chose to leave the country. That's why I left the country. 
I want to take you back to the 1996 April 6th street fight. Episcopal Church massacred. Episcopal Church? Yes. Where? On Johnson Street. On Johnson Street, there was a massacre there during the April 6th fight. Do you have any idea who was responsible and why? Well, my dear, to be honest with you and with all due respect to you, uh, you, may, you say I'm Ken Johnson Road, right? If I ever cross Center Street to go on the other side, that means you took me there. Never. Never. I mean, if everybody had their... I never went that area, so I wouldn't even know if anything... Uh, I'm, I'm just hearing by this one that there was a massacre at the uh, uh, Episcopal Church. I, it was almost like how the people of the Ulimo and... Um, NPF knew this area was a no-go area, and the people of Ulimo J also knew this area was a no-go area. So uh, I don't know about that. You serve as commander for INPFL and the government forces at one point in time. No, oh, with the INPFL, I was not uh, really a commander. Uh, but uh, with the government trivia, at one point in time, I was a commander. And then, at that time, there were several battles. I want you to reflect on your control area, how the civilians were treated. By your boys or you? How they were treated? Well, uh, it's not like my uh, control area. It would be like maybe my area of... Uh, responsibility if you cho choose to speak. Uh, honestly, madam, it's not for me to say. But this much I can say that I wouldn't want anybody inflicting pain on me. I wouldn't uh, deliberately inflict pain on anybody. And I cannot deny that maybe in the process, people path may have crossed, and uh, a long involvement with uh, um, uh, with uh, the because I didn't really have a long involvement with the MPFL. Contrary to what people think, I had a long involvement with the uh, government uh, of Liberia. Uh, when people cannot divorce, maybe the MPL fell from uh, that of the government, the government militia, so maybe they tend to say uh, 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 MPFL. So a lot of what I did with the government of Liberia in terms of uh, being responsible in an area was around the Nima area. Uh, I remember when it was said that I was commander, I don't know, in Sackley PA or I don't know. I wasn't commander in Cyclope. I just, I was responsible for the whole area within Nima at that point in time. So with regards to how uh, I personally interacted with civilians and with regards to how people that are associated with uh, acted with civilians, uh, Madam, if I have your permission, I would prefer where you to find out from uh, those people there, uh, I cannot sit and tell you that I was all this good or I was all you know, this way. But let me just clarify, Madam, that uh, I don't deny, I don't deny that in the process there may have been one or two incidents, but there was never uh, a systematic uh, mistreatment of civilians that I would know of. So uh, that would be my answer, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hi. How are you? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, and for sharing. Um, what little experience you have with the fighting forces and the government forces of us. Um, 
My first question surrounds um, your scholarship that you were supposed to get. You said you were recommended. Yes, ma'am. Then you came, and then it was not working. Yeah. My question is, why was it not working? Well, if I have your permission, uh, I would prefer that immediately after here, I will uh, explain to you as uh, I don't intend to uh, apportion blame to anybody. So if I have your permission, I can do that immediately from here. Okay. Um, do I? Yeah, we okay, can talk thank about you. that later. You said later on you met a superintendent from NIMA, Jackson Pay, who called a meeting, and then you were elected to be or appointed to be the... Um, is it a leader? Yeah, um, Jackson Pay is in Florida today. And um, if you would like to communicate with him, uh, I can find some of his contacts. I can give you his number. He yeah, came. let me finish with my question. Okay. And then you can go ahead. Um, you said you were appointed as the NIMA Student Crisis. As the chairman of the NIMA, NIMA Student, Student Crisis Management Committee. Management Committee. And uh, what was the TOR of that position? Well, the term of reference, like I said, was to uh, ensure that our students that came from NIMA, we were able to put them in an after-school program. Because we didn't think this thing was going to be a protracted war as such. Was there any time in your life talking on our OTA today that you made a concrete decision that in order to save your life you will go and be, you say you didn't join so I don't want to use the word join but that you will be a part of a fighting force in order that you survive. Well, uh, ma'am and I say to you looking you straight in the face and uh, on our oath the only other time, the only other time, and I say, to you, I say this to you as a Catholic, the only other time that I have asked to go and be a part of anything was this last 2003 war. I was not asked about it. I asked for it. I said I wanted to go because this was in my home. I asked uh, Mr. Taylor did not like push me into it, tell me to go to do it. It was my own decision that I was going to go there. If I was going to die, well, that was it, but that was my decision. What was your attitude towards or your feelings towards what was happening to the people of Nima County um, when Doe was the president? And then even when the war came um, and things were happening to people from, from Nima, what was your attitude at that time or your feelings? Well, to be honest with you, and again, I say to you this on our oath and um, all along, all along, I didn't really see myself as Nimbayan, as in the word Nimbayan. I always saw myself as a librarian. It was so to the point because the way a lot of us maybe including some of you here, children, are brought up. They brought up in a way that they don't really speak their local language. And you will be surprised to know that I started to speak improved manner at the University of Liberia, with the Nima University Student Association. Because it got so funny when you had this. So uh, I didn't even see this thing from the onset as a manner and crime thing. That never occurred to my mind until when it became so personal. So that I didn't have a special feeling because it was NIMA. Because NIMA has always been a pluralistic uh, you know, community. And a lot of the people that came there, came from out of there, were not just Nimbians that were coming from there. And even at the Lutheran Church, for example, why it is true that we had a good number of Nima people there, there were several tribes, you know, uh, uh, people there. So it was, considering all of what had happened, you know, you know, trying to retrospect all of what had happened, 
And when this incident happened, I knew for sure that a lure was like, you know, going to Nima. And uh, my mom is still in Nima, all this thing. And I said, well, I was going to go this time. And uh, that's why I went. Um, how long after you left uh, the barracks or this side to come across the bridge, uh, how long was it before you were able to meet Prince Johnson to go to the base? Well, it was like... I started off today and I met him the same day. Um, sometime in August, for those who have a retentive memory, there was some kind of fragile, I don't know whether it was a ceasefire or whatever, but I think it was either between Mr. Johnson and uh, Mr. Doe. There was some quiet period that time. It was on one of those days that I just got up and said I was going to go. Uh, that's how I came and because where I used to stay was on a bypass I didn't know anybody uh, uh, across the bridge all of my activities uh, was uh, on a bypass so uh, it was the same day that uh, I met him from there like I said I went to the US Embassy and I saw a friend and I said my friend wasn't here he's traveled so then I kept on moving until uh, I met Mr. Joseph the same day um, did you leave with the decision to go to meet him or was it by accident that you met him? No. In fact, uh, I didn't even know uh, he would have been there. I had gone and, uh, I mean, I never saw him in my life before. Uh, that was my first time, uh, you know, uh, meeting him. And, I mean, I just had the courage that, uh, since you say, uh, basically I was trying to push further. I've gotten to, I've passed uh, where they used to call what? Jensen, that's what we call called. I've passed Jensen, I've gone further down, and there's nobody, you know, that I know. So I was going in anticipation of meeting people that, uh, you know, I thought I would know. And then uh, I just kept on going. Uh, he said, This is come on. And I felt because he was from Nima, well, let me just, you know, go there. But I didn't get any special preference for, you know, coming from Nima. In fact, uh, someone like, But where were you? And, you know, I'm like, Well, I was here, you know. so that's what it was. Hmm. At one point during your ex uh, explanation, you said, and I quote, where I was was not where I wanted to be. And so for that reason you left. My question is, um, at that particular point, where were you? And where did you want to be? No, I was... Uh... No, not when it comes to um, the place you were, your statement was that where I was was not where I wanted to be. Yeah. Uh, it was not at the situation, no, um, no. the place. No, madam, what I'm saying. I understood it. No, this was what I was saying. If you had asked me, it is six, it is seven, or if you had come, meaning if you were like a associate to come and say, at this time, you will be associated with a rebel group or a military group. I would think you are crazy. I mean, meaning that that was not a part of my, one of those things that I thought about. And where I was, that I didn't want to be, was to be, how you call it, like on a military base or being a part of a military outfit or whatever. That's not where I wanted to be. That is far from where I wanted to be. Where I wanted to be was to be in a normal environment and live a normal life like anybody. And that's why when I had that opportunity, I left and came because there were, I didn't belong there. I didn't belong there as a soldier or as a gun toting or rebel or so. Um, you keep saying that you regret. You keep saying that you regret. I do. Okay. I do. My question is, what is it that you regret your role or the fact that a war came to Liberia? Madam, I regret everything. What is it everything. that you really regret? I regret everything. Even your role? Including my very role. I mean, I regret as we grew up, I mean, like, maybe you hear war in Sudan, like back in the days, and this was not one, one of those things we talk about. And 
I mean, but I'm just around where we are. And just go back to if we never had a war situation. There's no, nobody can convince me that we have been worse off. We have been better off. We have been better off. Look way across the road here. Look at the uh, Central Bend building. I remember when this Pan-African Plaza came up, that was the best thing that ever happened to Monrovia. Then we saw the Central Bank coming. We saw the Housing Bank coming. EJ Road right here. The new Defense Ministry. Uh, the new LBS. All of those things were things that were taking us ahead. And with the coming of this war, everything just came to a standstill. If we ever recover, I don't even know. And to say I don't regret that, I mean, there may be uh, something wrong with me, but so that's why I regret that and every other thing that was associated with, including my various of my involvement with the war, because in the process, uh, people got hurt along the way, and it's not a pleasant thing. War is not a pleasant thing, and I pray ever not to see this. You know, uh, why am I alive? I pray ever not to see it. Coming to your activities with the forces coming to your activities with the forces. Forces, forces. The different forces, especially the government uh, forces that you say you spend a longer time with. Um, what, where was your area of command? Uh, like I said, the protracted period that I spent with the, uh, the government uh, yeah. unit was uh, in Nima. In Nima. Where in Nima? Well, uh, my responsibility cover, I mean, everywhere I've, I heard there was trouble, more especially between Learn and Model, I will always go there. They had units there, but I will always go to uh, try to like beef them up or so. So there was already structure in the place. So where in the man were Lord forces? Uh, Lord was actually in about Maybe Lur was about, say, 5%, but maybe a little less than 5%, because what we have been trying to do with Lur was to see if we could hold them not to cross the bridge between Bong and Nima County. And we kept on doing that for a long time, and when we were assured that there was some ceasefire and nobody was like going to hit at somebody. The bridge is like this, so Lur was in the Bon County side and we were in the Nima County side. And later on, they crossed and came into the Nima County side to this place called Sukupa. They came in there and uh, maybe about a mile or two, that was how far we were able to keep there until uh, we had the troops come in. It was Model who uh, made a lot of gains uh, in Nima from the Tapetan and So were you also in charge of the areas that Model uh, made again? Yeah, I was also uh, shuttling between uh, where, I mean like I said earlier, maybe like in the morning I would concentrate on Lur in the evening because in terms of uh, measuring the strength of uh, the both groups, Lur was much more powerful than uh, that of Model, meaning that uh, if we were not concentrating, uh, for example, on Lur, Model you know, could have been like, uh, pushed by real fast. So we didn't see them as a major, major threat as we saw Lur. But that, that's not to say they were not a threat. Um, can you speak to us on the structure of the NPFL? And also, who were you giving, who were you taking direct orders from? Yeah, um, Madam, to be quite honest with you, my own association with NPFL, as in NPFL was not NPFL, it was NPFL and ULIMO. That was my own association with the both group. And like I told you earlier, the first person that I met at the time around the April 6th was Mr. Kroma, and then I met Mr. Taylor. So I did not know the structure as it like that, because immediately after that other phase of the war, 
I left from here and uh, I traveled. Then later on, uh, I came back. Then f it was followed by the elections. So uh, I was not MPFL as the MPFL. You say I met the both group together. I met the both group at the same time. When I got arrested on uh, April 6th, it was the both group. It was not one group. Okay, during your time with the government of Liberia, and were you with the militia or you were just a part of the, the army? No, I was not a part of the army. Um, well, to choose the word rightly, I was mostly associated with the uh, militia. And what was the structure in there and who did you take command from? Okay, well, the role that I played uh, with the GUL at the time, I was most time uh, called on uh, from time to time by uh, Mr. Taylor and uh, consulted uh, on issues. Uh, basically, that was what it was like. You know, there's this thing happening in the front line. You can go and you know uh, find and give me, you know, uh, a feel on what is happening there. Basically, that was what uh, I uh, was involved with most of the time. So the command came directly from him to the militia? Sorry? The command came directly from Taylor to the militia? The, the command, what? The Sorry, command came directly from Taylor to the militia? Yeah, I mean, he was the uh, president of Liberia, and uh, he was also the commander in chief of the army and the militia. Um, my last question is that uh, with most of the questions that were asked, you refer to the fact that your name, people may have been mistaken because of your name. My question is, um, you talk about another S, Adolfo Dolo. Um, was he also fighting? No. Is he still alive today? Yeah, he's alive. Do you know where we can find him? No, yeah, but like I said, he wasn't fighting. He's, uh, he worked with the uh, Ministry of Education. So he wasn't fighting? No, no, no. So I mean, there was, there was, was it possible that there was no way they could connect uh, and they could have made some mistake no, by madam, connecting that particular person's name no, madam, to the your point name? I, the point I was actually driving at, uh, the commissioner, uh, Commissioner Kafuma Kone had said earlier that, uh, she had said earlier that uh, there was this testimony about Dolo. So I was actually referring to the last name Dolo that there could have been several of those uh, dolo and I just gave you an instance of where I was in school and somebody and I had the same name. So uh, I don't, I don't, I mean, I never uh, went to the uh, MPFL side at the time to know even if he was uh, associated with that, but I let knew him from the university. So I didn't know him to be a... Uh, Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, okay. ma'am. Let me thank you again for taking time off to come here to share with us. We appreciate it. Thanks okay. for having me. Before I go into my questions, I would just like to just state briefly, um, based upon your own testimony here, you appear to be giving the a very careful testimony and I say that against the background that um, when you were asked questions by my colleague you said you didn't want to name people, you didn't want to implicate people and then also you <clears throat> haven't given any details per se or any significant details about exact incident. Um, an example is the question Commissioner Suda asked about um, the body of uh, President Samuel Doe who was killed and you were there at that time, you said you were there, but um, you gave um, explanation for that. But I would just like to appeal to you not to be intimidated by the process or by anything. We only seek to find out the truth and to know the truth. Because our work is of such that everything surrounds the truth. If we don't really know the truth of what has happened, we cannot write an 
an accurate account and leave an accurate history of what has really brought us to our knees as a nation. So I just want you to rem remember that. And then also, it's important in telling the truth, not only to tell um, other parts of it, but also for your own benefit. Because whatever you say to us, or whatever you don't say to us, I can tell you the truth will definitely impact or influence on how we as a commission discuss and deliberate and, 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 and draw conclusions on what our recommendations should be, including recommendations for reparation, for amnesty, and also for persecution. So you want to make sure that you present your side of it, the entire side of it, the truth no matter how it may come across, so that at the end of the day you are processed fairly based upon full disclosure that we have or that you will give us. I just want you to remember that. And then uh, also you, you mentioned on one or two occasions that you found yourself not by choice in certain environment and in certain company. You did not join any faction like willingly. Things happen and those places were not places that you would want to be. We, um, or should I say that I understand that point. Things happen and people find themselves in um, unfortunate circumstances. So let's not focus now. I'm just trying to lay the basis for where I will come from with my questions. I want you, when I question you, don't, let's not focus on how you did not want to be there, how you found us, yourself not a voluntary participants. Let's focus on what really happened because you were there. Whether you wanted to be there or not, unfortunately you were there. So please let's focus on when you were there, what happened, what you saw, what you heard, what you knew, at least to help us with our work. So at the end of the day, we can produce at least an accurate account of what happens that everybody will be pleased. In so doing, now, I proceed with my questioning. Mm -hmm. If you answer this question before, I will ask the question is because of emphasis. It's because I really didn't think we got the kind of answer that I thought we should get. That is if you answer the question before. You are referred to as general, or you were referred to as general peanut butter during the time of the fighting. That's correct. Are you the same person who they refer to as general peanut butter? That's correct. Okay. It has been rumors that, it has been rumored that the name peanut butter is associated with either rape, rape of women, rapes that took place, or associated with how you saw the war, your own acts during the war. Can you please come in? Yeah, uh, Madam Commissioner, thank you. And uh, let me just very clarify, let me just make it very clear to you. I don't feel uh, intimidated, uh, like you said, and everything I say here, I'm on an oath, and uh, you can do whatever research, and what I say here is exactly what happened. And prior to uh, you asking me a question, there were premises that you laid. So if my answer your question, like laying premises, uh, is not that I, I think uh, my laying premises gave me enough freedom to like express myself the way I know it. And there is no way I'm going to baffle any of your questions or whatever. If you ask a question and I didn't understand it or in an answer in a way that maybe you needed more clarification, just, you know, uh, ask me. So it's not like I am here because at the end of the day, it's going to be this, it's going to be this. Before I came in here, I know exactly what the the the... the the term of reference of the of the TRC is so I have not come to try to like uh, give you a run around you know or so so uh, I just thought that you know we have that clear and uh, to say that uh, the code uh, peanut butter is associated with all of this negativity uh, you said uh, I'm just hearing that uh, from uh, from you. Uh, with all due respect to you, uh, Madam Commissioner, uh, what I've been following uh, that has to do with me, uh, uh, 
as it relates to people coming and maybe testifying or, or before your commission. I don't know about this one, but the simple reason why this name, uh, for this radio code, which is not actually my name, uh, came about was what I said early, earlier when uh, uh, Dumuya decided that uh, we gave you radio that has to be a code and, you know, what's your favorite food? So that's how it kind of came in. And uh, to even want to uh, imagine that uh, this code is associated with, uh, you said, rape and what? Um, it's, it's, again, I will repeat that it's, it's a rumor. Yeah. Okay, and of course, rumors are not necessarily substantiated. So it is rumor that your name, General Peanut Butter, or your former name during the time of well, the war it, sorry, that's was why associated keep, sorry, with... Sorry, that's why I keep saying that was not the name. It was just a code name. Oh, it was a code. Yeah. Oh, so I shouldn't refer to it as a name. I oh, well, should just refer to it as a code. Well, I mean, if, if, if it makes you comfortable to say name, I mean, I don't okay. have a problem with that, but I just thought to tell you... Uh, okay, so your code... Code name or just code? Well, either way is fine. Okay. I'm just trying to. I thought you didn't right. get what I said earlier. It has been rumored that during the time of the, the war, the fighting, your code was General Peanut Butter. And Roman surrounds that the name Peanut Butter was as a result of either rapes that took place or rapes that were supposed to take place or something associated with the way the fighting went, the way you fought. I really don't know. That's why I'm asking the question. So can you please comment on it? I mean, that was supposed to take place. I don't understand. But ma'am, uh, the way I got this code, that's, what, that's just uh, how I put it to you. I didn't think I had any reason to, uh, I didn't think I had any reason to go to that extreme. I mean, uh, I mean, 